Hello everybody, Manix here. Gonna be doing a knife review on the Cold Steel Voyager XL in clip point. This happens to be the new, new, new gen. It's kind of difficult to define what generation the knife is currently in because this started out as like the super old models, like the Zytel pocket clips attached to the handle, and then later they upgraded the pattern, and then they upgraded the pattern again along with the metal clip, and that was also added to the previous model, and then they did the remodels which basically look exactly the same, not basically, they do look exactly the same as this one I'm showing you right here, but now the newer, newer, newer gen we're currently at is where they use the CTS BD-1 steel instead of the AUS-8 steel. And a lot of people really like them for that. The CTS BD-1 has been proven to be a little bit, I think it holds an edge a little longer. Overall, it's a better blade steel, I would say, but that's why the cost of the knife kind of increased, but not by a whole, whole lot. This is still a very affordable knife. Love the Cold Steel Voyager series, always will. They're just, they're very basic. I think they're cool looking. Um, they're not exactly stylish. I wouldn't say that. Some knives are just like, they look beautiful. I don't think this looks beautiful, but I still think it's awesome. I think it's awesome looking. Some people will kind of find this ugly. It's kind of like a, the Voyagers are kind of like the Glocks of the pistol world. I think they look cool, but you're not really going to meet anyone in the universe who's going to say, oh, that's a beautiful looking gun. In fact, most people are going to say, wow, that's so ugly. I don't think it's ugly, but I don't think it's beautiful either. It happens to be the XL size. They come in large and medium. Uh, they don't have a quote-unquote small size. I wonder why they called it a medium, but eh, maybe they just considered it a medium size folder, not necessarily just in comparison to the other models they have. I don't know. But this is in the clip point blade. Beautiful blade shape right there, I think. Stonewash finish. They also have this in the Tonto. And normally, if you know me and my channel, I love the Tonto. I always go for Tonto blades. But for this knife in particular, I think it just looks better as a clip point. I don't know what it is. For the XL, anyway. If I were to go down to the large, yeah, I would take the Tonto or even the medium, but... They all also have this in the Vaquero blade style they call, which I think is Spanish for cowboy. Something like that, but it has a like a double recurve on it, which is really, really, really awesome. It's almost like a kukri. It's like a funky looking kukri blade. So that's great for slashing and like pole cutting and hacking through the jungle if you were to do so with your folding knife for some reason. And they offer all of the blade styles in plain edge. Thank you very much. Please stop buying the serrated knives, guys. Just quit it. Unless you're like using your knife to cut rope of really fibrous materials all the time. Here's a problem. Okay, this is a little stupid rant of mine, but it's not stupid, because I don't think it is. It's just... Okay, well, maybe it is stupid, but the serrations on knives are annoying. Unless you get, like, the VEF serrations by CRKT, or if you do the... Uh, Kershaw's got the, uh, the Shallot serrations. I can't remember the name of their serrations, but they have a, a really cool pattern that works very well, too. But if you're doing the stupid, triple, weird, ugly point serration that you see on almost every single knife in existence that has serrations, they snag on things, they're nearly impossible to sharpen, they're really annoying, they, they suck. I hate those, I hate serrations, every, but so many people in the knife community hate those serrations. Sorry if you're the 5% or whatever, that doesn't, I'm just saying... So many people buy knives with serrations simply because they look aggressive. It's a marketing thing. And some companies like SOG, they have actually said that their serrated knives sell better. And you might think, okay, well, why are you arguing against that if they sell better? The problem is, I think it's just people who don't know much about knives. That, hey, look, it's so cool looking. It's got a saw on it. So I have a plain edge and I have a saw, not just a plain edge. That means it's better. And then they buy it and then they realize they suck and then they sell them. So whenever you're trying to buy used knives, like 90% of them are serrated because everyone's trying to get rid of them. And sometimes they'll go for even less than half of the price of the plain edge knives because nobody wants them. So it's like a marketing thing and people buy it because it looks cool, but then most of those people realize they don't actually want that. They want the plain edge. And then we have all these serrated knives all over the place getting really, really low asking prices that still aren't selling. If you don't believe me, try to get an old model Cold Steel Voyager. I've been collecting those recently. My collection's coming along rather nicely. Thank you very much. Hope to get all of them one day. But I cannot tell you, 19 out of 20 of them are serrated. And if you get a plain edge one, you're probably going to get... The bid's probably going to go up to like triple the price of the serrated one. So anyway, there's my stupid rant. It's over. So let's get with the specs. Um, This blade has a thickness of 4 millimeters. We have a blade length of 5.5 inches. 5.5 inches. That's a big mamma jamma. Handle length is six and three-fourths inches. They call it Grivex, which is basically FRN. There's also a flush-mounted aluminum liner in there. And that's weird. On the website, I, wait, I just found this right now. A Japanese AUS 10A. Did Cold Steel upgrade their knife again? Huh. That's that that that's weird. That's is that is that like a brand new new? I, I was not aware of this. Anyway, the Ignore that I just said that it's probably a new, new, maybe they upgraded their models again to a new blade steel, and this is like the very latest. Uh, but I know all the other specs are the same, so ignore that. This one has CTS BD-1 steel on it. We have an overall length of 12 and 1 fourth inches. I don't know, what, why are there specs all over the place on this? What the heck? Like, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just going from top to bottom. Uh, what the, uh, 
Overall length of 12 and 1 fourths inches. It weighs 7.2 ounces, which is actually pretty light for this side. That's a long, huge, very balanced feeling blade. You have so much to grip on here. And that's, uh, that's not bad at all. I've had knives half the size that were twice the weight and something like that. Retails at $119.99, but you can get these for about 60, 70 bucks, which is a great deal. The older models that use the AUS-8 went for, at the very cheapest, like 45 if you were lucky. But I think some were even like 42, 43 I got. Really great deal. But in the 60, 70 dollar range, this is still a great, fantastic knife for money. You're getting a lot of edge here. You got dual thumb studs right there, cylindrical. It's a good design. Triad lock, if you don't know much about that, it's a super strong locking mechanism, just absolutely out of this world when it comes to strength. It's just a regular lock back, but there is a tempered stop pin in there, and if you look at the design of it in the pictures, basically you have this knife where the positive force that's force going on the edge transferring to the stop pin, and the negative force that's on the spine transferring to the lock bar but then that transfers back to the stop pin again. So you have this full, like, triple divided functioning lock system where not too much pressure is put onto any part in particular, and it just makes it that much stronger just by having it there. It's considered to be the strongest single-handled, self-actuating locking mechanism out there. That's disregarding the, the RAM safe lock they came up with, which is supposed to be even stronger, but I don't call that self-actuating because you have to, I don't know, you, you gotta fiddle and pull it and use some force to actually get it to lock and unlock. It doesn't just do it on its own, like a quick little switch like that. And ballast songs and paratrooper style folders, a lot considered more strong, I do as well, but those have two handles, not one, and they're not self-actuating. So it's an extremely strong locking mechanism. Do you need all that strength? Eh, no. But for a knife this big, you might as well have it on there. It's peace of mind. It doesn't cost them much more to make the lock stronger that way, so why not? Personally, I'm not a huge fan of lockback knives. I think they're just slower. They're worse overall than a lot of locking mechanisms because you have to use two hands to close. You can't do the one hand thing. You can't. It's not a liner lock. It's not an axis lock or something like that. But they're strong. But the question is, do you need that strength? Generally speaking, almost never. Uh, when Benchmade did a test on their... I don't remember the name of it. Of course, it's the same. It's, it's the one that has the flipper. Benchmade 300, I think. Yeah, it's a clever name, 300. It, that knife right there has an axis lock, which is considered not as strong as a triad lock, but when they put a whole bunch of pressure on it, I can't remember the amount of pressure, I think it was 600 pounds or something ridiculous, the blade snapped, but the lock was still intact. So that tells me it doesn't need a lock any stronger than that. If your blade snaps before the lock snaps, what does it matter? That means your lock is infinitely strong enough. I guess. That's how I see it anyway, so you don't need it to be any stronger, unless you're doing like a benchmarking thing. So when people have their PCs, and I have 128 gigabytes of RAM, even though it's impossible to actually use that much. It's kind of like that. It's a bragging thing, I guess, but anyway. Tip-up carry only. It doesn't bother me. I prefer tip-up. It's a teeny, tiny, stubby little pocket clip, but I don't mind it. What I do mind is how aggressive this pattern is, and I, although I do like that, I like it. It's very, very sharp and pointy, pointy grip, and it's very grippy, and that's awesome. But what I don't like about it is that it tears up your pocket indefinitely when you pull it in and out, no matter what kind of pants you have, pretty much. So when I get my Cold Steel Voyagers, I've always taken the pocket clip off, sanded this section right here, popped that pocket clip back on, and it's good to go. They also give you a second pocket clip that would mount onto the left-hand side right here. You can't use the same one. I mean, you could, but it would it would like loop off or be on a weird angle. So that's why they give you two separate pocket clips. Cold Steel, I've made reviews like this years ago many times and multiple other people, other knife reviewers have all done the same thing, but they always tell you, make this spot soft right here. Make a little like soft section that's not so heavily textured and do it on that side. Just like one little boop. Is, that, is it too expensive? Is there something we're missing here? I don't know, but for years and years, going through all of the different remodels of the Voyagers, they've never done that. They have never, ever done that. So, obviously, Cold Steel knows we have an issue with this, but I don't know what the reason is. Why don't they do that? I don't know. They obviously have a reason behind it. We just don't know what it is, and they never tell us, I don't think. Anyway, if they've told us, let me know. But, like, come on, Cold Steel, just, just do that. I don't. It's not a huge deal, because I can sand it. Well, not, whatever, no big deal. I like modding my knives. I think it's cool, but still. Anyway, big old lanyard hole right there. We got a backspacer, which I love. I love backspacer knives. They're cool. Just, it looks more finished to me. I don't know. We have a attempt at jimping right here. It kind of works. If you really dig your thumb in there, you can... Yeah, yeah, yeah it's a little better, but it, they didn't line it up with the bar or the blade itself, so it doesn't really do much. Not that I care, but it's better than nothing, I guess. I, I guess it just costs them a lot more to 
make the little slits accommodate to the bar and the blade because they're so tempered. So maybe that's what it is. Whatever. Like, they could do it, but who knows what if it adds, like, $10 or even, like, $5 to the cost. What if they're trying to keep this knife very, very low costing for its size? And they have very, very heavily achieved that achievement right there. Very quick. No side to side. I feel a little bit of up and down, but all of every single Voyager, every Recon one I've had, I feel a little something moving there. I think it's just pushing the bar. I don't know what it is, but it's just, just a hair. It doesn't feel like a fixed blade, but it's strong enough. I've never had an issue with the lock. It just, I don't know what it is. It's extremely strong, but um, whatever. Very comfortable. Like, scooch down here, you get all this reach. Look at that. That'll outreach most people's fixed blades. I like these grooves right here. It's very comfortable. You can scooch up to here if you'd like. That's the normal, like, utility-style grip, I guess. And then this is, like, a precision grip if you scooch all the way up here. You get even more precise with your blade. I've seen some people scooch down here. Uh, I wouldn't do that. I feel like it might get knocked out of my hand, but if you want maximum reach, I suppose. Or if you have, like, a lanyard on there, something to grip onto, yeah, but I like this grip. Super strong, very light for its size. Just love how fat the blade is. I like the CTS BD1 steel, holds an edge very well. Good enough for the money, gets extremely sharp. Comes out of the box razor, razor, razor sharp. I love that beautiful stonewash finish on there. That will aid even more into rust resistance. I think all blades should be stonewashed. I love that aesthetically, but I also understand it has pretty much the best rust resistance when it comes to all the other finishes, minus, you know, something like a DLC coating or something, or even titanium nitrate, but still, alone without like a coating on it, extremely, extremely smooth rust resistant finish. And it's beautiful, I think, too. So I'm really glad Cold Steel, when they remodeled their Rajas, and so, well, not remodel, but when they added the new blade steels to all their other knives, they, they stonewashed them instead of bead blasted them. That's awesome. Like the rounded corners and edges here, so even around the lock bar, it's nice and smooth. A lot of attention to detail. Really cool, just awesome, functional folding knife. If you're going into the whole defensive thing, it's going to be an absolutely amazing knife for that. A lot of reach, super strong, don't gotta worry about it failing on you. Super intimidating. Now, for these knives, for really big knives, I think tip down would be a little more handy because when you pull it out of your pocket, yeah, you gotta do the little swivel thing, but the thumb set's closer to your hand. When I pull it out like this, and I only have like a little bit to reach right there, I kinda have to do a little doohickey move like that. Like, I gotta shake it, shimmy shake it into my hand. I don't know what I'm saying. Like, like yeah, that's what I do. I, I can't, unless I climb my hand up, so it's a little bit quicker if it were tip down. But, Cold Steel puts tip up on just about all of their knives, if not all of them, and I guess, you know, sometimes you want muscle memory going down. Like, if you rotate through your EDC, you may forget, like, oh, wait, that one stepped down, that one stepped up. And in a stressful situation, trying to pull your knife out fast, you might drop it or something because you didn't realize it was on a different side. Or you may even injure yourself. So, whatever. I think it's also safer with tip-up because the end of your pocket's right here. So if your hand's down here, it your hand's not going to get cut. The blade's in here, and it can't possibly come out because your pocket's in the way. So tip-up, I think, is also a safer option for carrying. So, yeah, good job with the tip-up. I like it. There's a lot to grip onto here, too. Some people are like, I want the loop over clip so no one can see it. Well, it, it'll be a lot more difficult to pull out otherwise. And plus, they're going to see it anyway, even if it is loop over, so whatever. So, anyway, that was my angry... I don't know why I'm so mad. I don't know why this video... I'm, I'm coming off as so passive-aggressive. I'm very sorry. I'm usually a lot more nice. I didn't mean to be offensive or anything if I said anything that was rude. Like, I made fun of the way your voice sounds if you want the loop over clip. No, of course, I don't actually mean that. I'm just... I don't know, but this is a fantastic knife for the money. You get so much reach, great like combat defensive style knife, great outdoorsman's knife, and it's a pocket knife too. So it's like strength almost of a fixed blade, reach of a fixed blade, yada yada, but it's a folding knife, and it carries very, very well, and it's light too. These knives have been proven time and time again to be absolutely fantastic EDC choices, extremely strong, extremely reliable, indestructible, bomb-proof, and affordable working knives. So, that's it. That is the Cold Steel Voyager XL and clip point. CTS BD1.